वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू दिस हॉलीडे पार्टी आई विश यू ऑल वेरी हैप्पी हॉलीडेज एंड आई होप यू एंजॉय दम बोथ इन साइड एंड आउट साइड इट इज सेट दैट दी सेंट्स एंजॉय दर हॉलीडेज एवरी ईयर ऑफ दफ एवरी डे ऑफ द ईयर बिकॉज दे एंजॉय देयर हॉलीडेज विद इन दम सेल्स इन साइड we light up candles we put lights outside little realizing that there is far more light within our own self and we can celebrate any holiday every day within ourselves swami ji your father said sant diwali nit kare sat lok ke mahi the saints have a diwali every night within themselves in sub lok in their true home our true home is within us and therefore we can celebrate this holiday all the time indeed we have come into this world to celebrate a holiday we didn't come here to suffer we didn't come here to get into the trap of karma and our own minds we came here for an adventure a holiday we came into this whole universe to have a new experience like a holiday like a vacation we never came here to get caught up in the attractions of this world and trying to make those attractions our own trying to make people that we see here as our own it is so strange that when we don't know what the truth is we go about making characters in a play our own relations our own friends If you were given a part in a play and asked to go and take part as an actor, and you act on the stage, are you going to make all those people who are acting on the stage as your own? They are your own according to the script, according to the part to be played. And once the show is over, you come back home. We came here precisely like that. There was only one who could come here, and the one became the many. and the one became the many just for the sake of this play the play was created we came here and we created all the characters separated them from ourselves so we could have great experiences emotional experiences experiences of pain and pleasure experiences of high and lows we did lot of wonderful adventures but then we are supposed to go back home what have we done we have got attached to the stage on which we were playing we got attached to the things the property on the stage that was lying there just for the sake of the play we are trying to make these goods lying on a stage as our own and when we step off from the stage which we all must do the play must end when we step off we can carry nothing of this with us nobody has ever carried anything that belongs to the physical world with them when they die and we all die no exception which means nobody ever carries anything from this world and then we try to make people our own as if they will be going with us very short lived relationships we have these relationships are created only to make characters in the play do their part according to a script pre written pre remembered and played out by the actors we are all actors of the stage and we forgot that we are actors we trying to make this as our only reality actually we cannot blame ourselves for that because we can't see our true home we don't even know where it is we don't know which direction to move towards our true home we don't know how to step off from the stage and go back home because to make this play as realistic as possible we hid ourselves we hid ourselves in one of the characters we picked up one character in the play and hid ourselves in that character and began to feel we are that character and therefore began to live a life of that character we forgot that we are hiding somewhere but we did one good thing before we decided to come into this play we made a small arrangement an arrangement that if we forgot where our true home is 
if we forgot that we have come here only for a play, then there should be some kind of a reminder, some kind of a system by which we can be pulled back into a memory of where we belong. And that arrangement we made is working very well. The arrangement was that in the play which we are creating, there should be one character coming to us as another character. And in that play, that character should speak to us and say, the play should end, you have to go back home. That other character who should come, we predetermined it. We wrote it up in our script that when we are tired of the play, when we are tired of this adventure, that certain character whom we are predetermining to help us should come and speak to us in that play and say, let's go back home. Play is finished. Such a character we call a perfect living master in this world. The perfect living master is nothing else but another character like ourselves. Another person, a human being just like ourselves. A human being because we can communicate with a human being. We cannot communicate with other things. Supposing we want to communicate with birds and animals, we don't understand their language. It is our mind that interprets what they are saying. People say we talk to angels. People say we talk to God. And people refer to whatever is happening in their head as a reference to a conversation with somebody else. No, it's all a conversation with your own mind. The mind is conversing with itself. That does not mean that you are having any access to anybody. When you remember that your true home belongs to you, you are the one and the many in your true home. The many were created so you could experience the most fundamental function of consciousness of your own reality, the function of love. That you created the many to experience love as an experience, not merely as a concept, not merely as an entity. That was great that you were able to create the many and then lower that many down into many levels of consciousness, many levels of experiences, so that you could come up to this level of a physical experience and play out a role here and experience love of that kind, a love that belonged to you in your true home, belongs to you today and has always belonged to you so long as you are a conscious being, so long as you are a soul. A soul, what is a soul? A soul is consciousness per se. If there was nothing else besides consciousness, we would call it a soul. When consciousness and the spirit of consciousness, which, which means consciousness acting as something to be conscious of, which means it becomes a creative power. When a creative power creates something, then that spirit of consciousness, the spirit of the soul, then plays out these different roles and we have great experiences. It's wonderful. We should have all these great experiences, enjoy them, and then listen to the arrangement we ourselves made to go back home. When our seeking is real, when we have sought within ourselves that we are done with this play, we are tired of it, we are fed up of this, we have had enough of it, when these kind of thoughts come and we want to seek our true home, the character we have already pre-named as a perfect living master appears in our life, appears in our physical life right here. Since the play is being created by us, we have created everything including the perfect living master. He's not being created by somebody else. Our own consciousness is creating everything including the perfect living master. But the perfect living master has a different role than all other characters. All other characters are there so we enjoy the play, interact with them, and the perfect living master is coming and saying, play ends, let's go home. The different role we have given to a character we call perfect living master. A perfect living master always comes to us when we seek within ourselves. It does not require shouting outside, it does not require going to any man-made building that we have built. The only place where you can find that ultimate creative power, the one which is being spread out as an experience all over, is within yourself. Because that is where you hit yourself. 
you hit not only your soul inside a character, you hit the very essence of the soul, the very totality of the soul, the creative power itself, the creator himself, God himself. You put everything yourself into a hiding place and that's a very wonderful hiding place. And that is what I've come to explain to you. If you try to go into that hiding place, which is inside you, inside your physical body, you'll find all the truth of all the statements I am making and all the statements that have been made by all founders of all religions. It's not a unique thing that only one particular group or religion knows about it. It's true for everybody, for the entire humanity. That is why if you want a real holiday, go to the hiding place. There are a lot of lights there, a lot of candy there, a lot of sweets there, a lot of good company there, a lot of love there. Everything you are looking for outside is there and much more than you can see outside. This looks so gross compared to what is inside. I would really recommend if you want to enjoy the holidays, enjoy the holiday within yourself and make it a real holiday, which means something to enjoy. I come and meet my friends here and they say, oh, Christmas season has come, Hanukkah has come. People, my Muslim friend tell me, Eid Mubarak, we have to get ready for all their celebrations. All these people celebrating different festivals, religious festivals as holidays. They come to me and say, now we have to give gifts. We are under great tension and strain, stress. Gift time has come. I thought gift giving was a great moment for happiness. Looks like we are created the stress out of that also. So that is why we should change this concept of a holiday into something that we really enjoy. The best way to enjoy is to go within yourself. That is why I salute all of you on this day when we are celebrating a holiday. And for all holidays, I'm not only talking about today, any holiday you have and all the holidays you have, I congratulate you that you have an opportunity to not only celebrate the holiday within yourself, but also to find a way back to your true home while celebrating your holiday. Because the hiding place, which is within the body, within this head, behind the eyes, is not outside. Behind the eyes, in the space between the ears, right behind the forehead, that little space in your own body, just put your attention there. As you will see, that there is a great holiday place there. And that's also the way back to your true home. It is also going to give you an indication that you can go to your true home whenever you like. It's not that you've been bound down. You created these desires and attachments and got bound down by yourself here because you reacted so much to what was around you. You were always continuously occupied by reacting to things around you. You forgot anything about your own self. You're only looking at things outside. But the problem is when we close our eyes to see what is inside, we see nothing but darkness. Where is that light we speak of? We speak of so much light inside, so much color inside, so many wonderful things happening inside. We close our eyes, we don't see any of that stuff. What is missing? Something is really missing that we cannot see the light and the wonderful things inside. And what is missing is our attention is not there. Our attention is constantly outside. Even when we close our eyes, what are we thinking about? We are thinking of all the things outside. Thinking of people, thinking of our obligations, thinking of our responsibilities, thinking of things that we are missing, think that we are having too much or too little. We are constantly thinking of things outside of ourselves. So when we close our eyes, we are not inside, we are outside because our attention is continuously outside. Therefore, this great gift given to us as a creator's gift to us, the power of using your attention wherever you like. That power can be used to put your attention on things outside. The same power can be used to put your attention inside. If we withdraw our attention from outside and put it inside, we will celebrate our holiday and find 
the gateway, the doorway that leads to the path that goes to our true home. That is why I am giving this congratulations to you because on this day we can remind ourselves that not only we celebrate a holiday, we also find a way to our true home. Some people have asked me that I should always say a few words in the local languages with which I grew up. Punjabi, Urdu, Hindi. So if you give me some indulgence, I just say a few sentences for those listeners who like these languages that I, I have broken knowledge of now because since I came to America, I had to learn American idiom, American English, not British English, American English, it's a little different. And therefore, uh, I had to go to an American university to le learn American English. My master, the great master, Harur Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh, he said, the axis of spirituality is going to shift to the west from the east. And therefore, I came running here to see where the axis is shifting and came to take a ringside seat before it is taken by others. And that's what I'm trying to do now when I come here. I'm just trying to convey to people the same things I learned from the great master. And he said all that is required is to put it into a Western idiom, a Western language. And that's what I've been trying to do, learning Western languages and trying to put across this. But at the same time, I would like to send greetings to people who have not spoken uh, this language, but they speak their own language. I, for example, I was born in Punjab, and I'll say a few words in Punjabi if you don't mind. Mere Punjabi pehna ho prabo, tohanu bhoat bhoat mubarak hove, chutti aandi, koi bhi chutti hove, basakhi hove, diwali hove, koi bhi chutti hove, tohanu mubarak hove. Ek koi gal yaad rakho, ki asli chutti mana anda tari kaya hui hai ki apne andar vado. Asi andar vado de nahi, baar dekhne pae hai, andar jo saade andar jayadad rakhi hui hai, kura par matwa le, unhu dekh de nahi pae. Bulle shah kaya gaya hai, rabda ki paana, aetho putna, aethe laana. ऐनी मामूली गल की है कि जो तुम बहर देख रहे हो छड़ के अंदर देखो तो रब मिल जाएगा इस करके मेरा संदेश तो बड़ा छोटा है कि जो छुट्टियां मनानी है चंकी तरह तो तुम अपने अंदर मनाओ अंदर बढ़ के देखो संत दिवाली नित करें सत लोग के महाए अपने अंदर तुम भी दिवाली मना सकते हो इस तरह तुम क्रिसमस मना सकते हो तुम सारे जिन्हें थोड़े फैसटिवल है सारे अंदर बैठ के बना सकते हो तो सू सारे मुबारक हो कि तुम छुट्टियां मना आए हो तो मैं भी थोड़े नाल शामिल हो गया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद उन लोगों के लिए जो मेरे दोस्त पाकिस्तान में मुसलमान भाई हैं उनको असलम अर्ज करता हूँ अदाब अर्ज करता हूँ और मेरा उनके लिए पैगाम बहुत मुख्तर है पैगाम यही है कि अगर खुदा को पाना है तो खुदा आपके अंदर है बाहर नहीं है आप बाहर बॉलवी की बांग को सुन के जाते हो मस्जिद में वो तो बाहर की आवाज़ है जो बांगे आसमानी जो अंदर चल रही है उसको सुनो अपना ध्यान बाहर से निकाल के अंदर डालो तो आपको असल बांगे आसमानी सुनाई आएगी उस बांग को पकड़ लो अंदर रोशनी भी है आपके खुदा के जाने के रा, रास्ता भी अंदर ही है तो इसलिए मेरा यह आपको पैगाम है कि आपने अगर खुदा को पाना है तो अंदर से पाओगे बाहर से नहीं हम भागते हैं बाहर अब मैंने शुरू में अपनी तालीम उर्दू में पाई फारसी में पाई लेकिन यहाँ अमरीका आके मुझे टूटी फूटी कोशिश रह गई है कि इन जबानों में बोलूँ इसलिए थोड़ा माफ़ करना अगर मेरा उर्दू ठीक नहीं है लेकिन मैं फारसी का एक शेर आपको सुना देता हूँ शेख सादी का जो मैंने स्कूल में पढ़ा था दिल बतस्त आवर के हज अकबरस्त कि अगर दिल को काबू कर लोगे तो सबसे बड़ा हज हो जाएगा दिल बदस्त आवर के हज अकबरस्त कि अस हजारा काबा यक दिल बेहतर रस्त तो ये सोच लो ये सब कुछ अंदर है हमारे तो मैं आपको बहुत मुबारक देता हूँ छुट्टियों की किसी किस्म की छुट्टियाँ हों ईद मुबारक हो और कोई छुट्टी हो सबकी मुबारक देता हूँ और खुदा हाफिज आई जस्ट सेड फ्यू वर्ड्स इन टू अदर लैंग्वेज होप दैट दीपल हु डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द अमेरिकन इंग्लिश विल अप्रिशिएट द स्मॉल मैसेज आई गेव अगेन आई कम बैक टू द पॉइंट that how do we put our attention inside in order to get the 
vacation, the holiday inside. It is simple. We use very simple techniques. Techniques that are available to anybody, all human beings, irrespective of the nationality, irrespective of their religion, irrespective of their age, irrespective of their gender or the color of their skin. They have the same easy methods of putting their attention inside. And that is what is pulling us out when we close our eyes and try to put our attention? The thoughts. The thoughts are taking us out. So we replace the thoughts with chosen words, especially chosen by our perfect living master, who has come outside for the very same purpose, to be able to guide us. So if he chooses some words which don't have any relevance to anything outside, and we repeat those words with our mind inside, we are blocking the words of thought with the artificial words we are pumping in. It's like squeezing words of a mantra, words of a meditational simran. We are replacing the words of thought with those words. If we can hold on to that practice, we'll find that the mind will not run out with thoughts about other things. That's a very good method. That's method number one. Second method is that when you try to put your attention inside, you hear sounds inside which are not being created from outside, but only within yourself, firstly, from your own body, secondly, from your own consciousness, your own self, which makes you feel this is me, that's I. Itself has a resonance, a sound, which you can hear by putting attention inside. The attention must be kept right in the center from where it is flowing out, which means we are pulling our attention back to from where it goes out. And if we can do that successfully, we will find we open the tenth door inside and see all the light that we are talking of. These eyes, two eyes, are meant to look outside. They are not designed to look inside. We can't be closing these eyes and try to use these eyes to look inside. The eye that can see is a single eye inside. That single eye is situated right in the center of our head. Purely from the point of anatomy, you could say it's very close to where the pituitary body and the pineal gland is. It's between the ears, behind these eyes in the center. If you can put your attention on that, you'll be able to experience the opening of the tenth door and the big light that is inside you. If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. Just a quote. If you can put your attention in the center, by any means, and I'm only telling you two or three means, by any means if you can put your attention there and withdraw it from outside, you'll see the kind of light you've never seen outside. It doesn't exist outside. That kind of celebration you can have, there's so much light inside. And we are missing it because our attention is all outside. But to put that, to remove the thoughts and repeat words is only one method. Second method is, when you have done sufficient concentration of your own self, of your own attention inside, you will hear sounds from within and those sounds will pull you. The more you try to listen to those sounds, the closer you get to your own true self. And that is why the second part, which is listening to the sound, is very effective and takes you in very quickly and opens the light inside. The third method is a tried method and a very good one, fall in love. Nothing like that. When you fall in love with, it, with anybody, your attention goes automatically there. Fall in love with somebody who's inside. Fall in love with an image that is inside. And express your love. Have a conversation. Consider this a chat box, a chat chamber for you. And have a chat inside. The more you are having a love talk with your beloved inside, you are putting your attention right there. And these three methods are not exclusive of each other. You can try all of them. And a perfect living master who comes into our life to take us back to our true home teaches these methods so that they are easy while we are in a physical body and we can practice them. 
So may I suggest that if you want to celebrate this holiday, you practice going inside and we'll all celebrate together. Because you will find that the higher we go inside, the closer we get to each other. Ultimately, when you reach the top, you find we were all one to start with anyway. And we took different forms. We took different forms as we went into different levels of consciousness in order to experience this love, in order to experience this unique feature, which has no equal. Love is not something that you can get easily because love is different from attachments. When we are attached to things, we use the word love. We are attached to our houses, we love our houses. We are attached to our family, we love our family. These are attachments. There is a very big distinction between attachment and love. The main distinction being that in attachment you are conscious of yourself. You are also conscious. In attachment you are conscious of that to which you are attached. Think of it. If you say to somebody, I love you, what is your, what is your consciousness? What is your awareness at that time? Awareness is of yourself saying you love somebody and the person to whom you are saying you love. Constantly you have two personalities sitting in you and they are very predominant, those two personalities. Or they can be things. If you love your car, new car so much, there is the car and there is you. And that attachment is a third function between the two of you. You don't get rid of either of them. In an attachment, you are constantly aware of yourself and your thing that you are attached to. But in love, this doesn't happen. In love, you forget yourself. In love, you identify, your thought identifies with the beloved. Your thinking space, your space where you feel, your emotional space is filled with the beloved. Therefore, you have no time for your ego, for the I. If it is attachment, you will assert your I. I love you. Do you love me? I hear these kind of statements every day. People talking like that. The I is so prominent there. The ego is so prominent. But in true love, you forget the I. The beloved occupies the whole space. Therefore, there is a very big distinction between true love and the attachments which we call love in this world. But love is a great way on the spiritual path. In fact, at a certain point, you'll find it's the only way. When does that happen? It happens when these practices of trying to listen to the sound, of trying to repeat words, which are mental efforts, when these can lead you no more than an understanding of your mind, and you want to go beyond your mind, then none of these things work. No amount of repetition can take you beyond your mind. No amount of listening to sounds can take you beyond your mind. But these are efforts being made by your mind. In fact, all effort we make is with our mind. We are not accustomed to any other kind of effort except an effort with our mind. So at certain point, the effort must stop because the effort is confined to what the mind can see, what the mind can provide. So when we do our meditation with mind, we can go no more than where the mind can go. And the mind does not go that far as we might think. The mind stops at the point where time and space is created. Mind cannot function beyond time and space. Mind cannot visualize anything beyond time and space. Mind cannot talk about anything that is beyond time and space. And therefore there's a, there's a threshold which starts beyond the mind where none of these mental things, now no amount of effort can ever work. Then what works there? If we want to go to our true spiritual home, to a home beyond our mind, to a home where soul and total soul, totality of consciousness exist, how do we proceed beyond the mind? The only thing that pulls us there is a beloved on the other side who pulls with unconditional love. Now that's easy said than done. Where is that beloved? Where is the beloved? Where do we find the beloved will pull us beyond the mind? Well, if we practice the mental part first, which means that guided by that character who becomes a perfect living master in our life, guided by that person, we go with, within and see that the person is still with us within at every level of consciousness, including our mental levels. And we become a friend of that person. And then we find out as we proceed 
reach the end of our mental journey and find that we are still getting a call from the same person as a spiritual being, as one who is beyond the mind. And we follow that call with our unconditional love, being drawn by the unconditional love of that person. We can cross the mind and go to our true home. Ultimately, we don't go to true home by these mental meditational techniques ever. They take us to the edge of the mind. And beyond the mind, we can only go with love and devotion. Why do I say love and devotion? Because we are so used to attachments that we think that is love. Therefore, we cannot love really. We have lost the power, though we feel the love all the time with people, with things, and we convert it to attachment. Therefore, when we want to go beyond the mind, it, the love must come from somebody beyond that. An unconditional love calling us beyond, from beyond the mind. And we will then respond to it uh, through devotion. That's why we use two terms, love and devotion. Love is the unconditional pull that comes from the beloved. In fact, the beloved has to be there before you can experience any kind of love or devotion. The beloved comes first. In Persian they say, Ishka aval dardile mashuk paida mishawal, which means that love is first born in the heart of the beloved. Then you pull to it. It doesn't happen that you can say, oh, I know somebody, I'm going to extend my love. It doesn't happen like that. Therefore, you have to have a pull from somewhere. That pull from, of an unconditional love is a secret of the spiritual path. If you want to go beyond the mind, the secret is an unconditional love pulling you beyond the mind. And that unconditional love must pull you from here too. We don't have to wait till we go to the edge of the mental world and then get be pulled by that uh, particular beloved of ours, particular lover of ours. That love must start from here. Indeed, it does start from here. It starts from the very starting point where we are sitting now. What pulls us to that character we call the perfect living master? What really pulls us? Are those his teachings? Are those his words? Are those his lectures? Certainly not. All these teachings are there in all the books. The words have been spoken thousands of times and thousands of people are speaking the same words today. That's not going to pull us. That's so boring to keep on hearing the same thing. Something that is so boring doesn't pull us. It has to be something more than that. Now there is something more. It's the unconditional love. That perfect living master if nothing else can be recognized in that person, at least this you will recognize that his love is unconditional and pulls. Pulls, not, does not pull our mind, pulls our soul. Pulls us somewhere where the mind questions, why are you being pulled? It is such a beautiful thing, that pull of a soul to a soul. Something that is beyond the mind pulling you. That is something that cannot match any kind of mental connection with anybody. Therefore, right from now, these perfect living masters who come into our life when we are ready. When are we ready? Whenever we are able to say, I have had enough. If somebody comes to me and says, I am still enjoying this life, I want to enjoy more, I will say, go ahead. You are not ready yet. It's not necessary that we all be ready at the same time. We all have a different timings. We all have uh, sometimes we keep going, keep going, then we get fed up. There's no single time for anybody. So, whoever wants to enjoy this show anymore, go on, enjoy. Their time is not yet. But only somebody who says, I have had enough. Now I am done with it. I want to go back to my true home. Such a person is ready. Such a soul is ready. Now I must distinguish between the mind speaking and saying this thing or something else in us speaking and saying this thing. The mind speaks through thoughts and thinks, I want to go home. And the mind say, the same mind says, there is no true home. And these are all made up stories. The same mind creates doubt over the very thing it is saying. The mind is constantly in conflict and confusion, saying one thing at one time and opposing the same thing next moment and constantly confusing us all the time. That mind doesn't take us anywhere. But then there is something else. 
which we call the sixth sense, the intuitive power of a human being, the intuition. Intuition is different from reason and thinking of the mind. Intuition does not depend upon the thoughts. Intuition is coming directly from your soul, not from the mind, at all times, even now, even here. When you are pulled by the unconditional love of a perfect living master, who is responding? Not the mind, but your intuitive self, your own soul. And that is why intuition can tell us things which the mind may reject. And then we try to serve. Try to put a lid on the intuition and want to live with our mind. We have relied so much on the mind. We have grown up with the mind. We have been trained in the mind. We have been educated in the mind. We have been told to think, think, think all the time. When I first came to study American EDM at Harvard University, there used to be signs put up everywhere, think. And I, I figured out, this is where we are going wrong. We are thinking too much. We should be more intuitive. We should look at our gut feelings. And we are rejecting gut feelings. We are rejecting the intuitive knowledge we get just because we are thinking too much. And I am not saying don't think. I am saying think what you like to think. We don't do that. Mind is a great gift given to us. It has been given to think, to reason, rationalize, put sense into sense perceptions, good functions of the mind. We are supposed to use it for these purposes. But we don't use the mind. We use it as a consultant to tell us what to do. We are not supposed to be guided by the mind. We are supposed to tell the God, tell this mind what it should do, what it should think, based upon our intuitive knowledge, based upon what the gut feeling says. We are putting the cart before the horse. We try to put the mind ahead of our intuitive feeling. We try to reason out what I should be doing. The mind says, do this. Next day we say, oh, sorry, I didn't know some part of something that is going to happen. Intuitive knowledge does not depend upon what is in front of us. But the mental knowledge depends upon what is presented to us. It's very limited. Mental knowledge is confined to logical operation of reason. It does not go beyond. We employ logic. We employ the thinking machine in a logical order to come to conclusions. And most of the time, we are sorry we did that. Why? Because the logic only works on the data, on the premise presented to us. And when a certain data is presented and we come to a conclusion, next day we add some more to the data and the conclusion becomes incorrect. Which happens all the time. Because the mind cannot see anything beyond. It has forgotten what happened a few years ago, submerged most of its memory into the subconscious. The conscious mind has such a small frame of data available to it and goes on logic upon that little data. There are two kinds of logic they use. And that's what they teach us in philosophy and logic. The deductive logic and inductive logic. Deductive logic is simply a statement of fact which is known in the premise. Deductive logic says, these chairs are all blue for which you are sitting. And those are also chairs in this building, therefore they must be blue. That's deductive logic. Gave no new information only confirmed what we were saying to start with. It's only a different section of the same data we are repeating and calling it logic. Inductive logic, on the other hand, has a law of probability operating in it. Inductive logic says, these chairs are all blue, maybe outside this hall there may be chairs, may also be blue. That's inductive logic. They may or may not be blue. It's only a law of probability we are applying, and there is uncertainty about it. When we go into this kind of logic, don't we realize that our mind is going into an area of uncertainty? It always does. The more you think, the more uncertain you'll become. I have friends who say, we know something. I said, let's discuss it. Let's repeat the same argument over and over again. After some time, they say, I'm confused, I'm not sure. It's so simple. Because you can test it out that the very purpose of using the mind is to come to conclusions which are applicable to what is in front of us and to make use of it. We should use our mind. We should make our mind think what our intuition tells us the mind should think. 
not the mind should think and tell us what to do our gut feeling should tell us what to do we should instruct the mind now follow up and tell us how to do it that will be the correct way of using our mind is given to us for that purpose it's a great device it's a great equipment given to us but not supposed to be a good advisor for us our advisor is our soul self our own self our own soul our own spirit our own inner consciousness our own power of intuitive knowledge that's what should be there intuition does not depend upon the data in front of us intuition depends upon all the accumulated data from the time of creation till today all packed into our minds and it just uses the entire accumulated data to give us intuitive knowledge so many studies have been done on this on the distinction between reason and intuition yet we fall prey to reason and to thinking and wonder why we are we are not making any progress therefore let's make good use of these things that have been given to us the intuitive power to get to know the truth and the power of reasoning power of thinking of the mind to get things done to communicate to talk to write to do all these things that the mind is capable of doing be creative but don't make the mind your advisor which we have been doing so if you make the mind your advisor it blocks you from going to anything beyond the mind it's almost like a self survival self preservation of the mind it doesn't want you to go beyond itself it's almost taken on its own entity do you know that the life force what makes things alive is our soul our consciousness if there's no consciousness there's no body there's no sense perceptions there's no mind all these functions because we have life force because we have a soul we have the spirit of the soul empowering all these things to work the mind is alive because of the soul the sense systems are working because of the soul this body is working because of the soul then how can we not rely upon our own self our own soul and rely upon something given to us just to have an experience outside so that's why we should be going back to our intuitive self and if we can do that if you go with your gut feeling your whole life will change from tomorrow just reverse this don't decide by what you think decide what your inner intuitive self says and make the mind work it out you will see everything will be successful from tomorrow but don't make the mind set up an intuitive system also sometimes the mind does that because a friend of mine came to me he said i am practicing intuition i said i didn't know anybody can practice that but anyway how do you do it he said, i'll tell you now i want to decide whether i'm going to go and attend that workshop or not now wait i'm going to get the intuitive knowledge ah uh, i'll go i said i'll go is all right but what about that ah intuition does not work in time and space intuition does not take any duration when it comes it comes suddenly thinking always takes time any kind of thought will take time look big distinction here is a knowledge coming to you without any time without any space which is intuitive and there is knowledge coming by thinking which takes time even though small thought will take time and we are mixing up the two that's not intuition that's a rapid use of reasoning that doesn't make it any difference is still the use of the mind therefore if we can rely more upon our own true self upon our own intuitive knowledge of the self intuitive knowledge of our soul that's getting given given to us in flashes from time to time and supposing we look for that we don't create it but we look for it look at the right place look as close as possible to where we are as soul as that which is conscious as consciousness that is radiating itself out through attention as consciousness sitting inside this body in the head and then spreading itself out through a spread of attention and we we draw that attention back to the place from where we are spreading it and then there we work out and here if any intuitive message is there it always be there we don't listen to it it's always there 
if you can concentrate your attention to be inside your body inside your head behind the eyes intuition is always telling you what to do 24/7 it's not that once at a time we get it that's because we don't put attention to it our attention is scattered therefore if you want to have true intuitive knowledge you can have it 24/7 the only thing is practice going to the center of your head which is a physical practice at the most it's a mental practice it is not a spiritual practice either it's just a practice to be able to be well guided how to live this life and make it wonderful like an adventure if we knew that this was all a pre made pre meditated pre programmed play and we are watch, watching it by sitting behind the eyes and the body in which we are sitting behind is also one of the characters in the play life will change from one day the spiritual teaching is not something that is very uh, difficult or very or very uh, slow to get you can get it very quickly but just follow the right steps don't make it another exercise of a religious dogma don't make it an exercise of a type where you are not uh, not able to distinguish between your own self and the mind where you are led by the thinking led by the memories led by what people are telling you led by all this counsel given to you if you do all that you will be always in a state of confusion but if you forget all that say i just want to discover who am i where am i what am i doing there why am i there put this question to yourself and put these questions where you are as consciousness which is behind the eyes inside put these questions you will get all the answers to these questions right there but if you are looking outside all the time nobody knows if we going to blind people to see how we can see with our eyes we are we are blind in a way because we don't look at the our own self we look at things that we have created just for a temporary use here so that is why to open our eyes we should be able to pull ourselves behind the eyes simple methods which you should follow use any mantra any set of words which does not mean anything outside but means something inside preferably words obtained from somebody who is already inside inside us like a perfect living master words given by such a person which he, he will give at a time of initiation what is initiation we talk of initiation all the time initiation is that character that human being who comes into our life and establishes his friendship forever eternal friendship with us in order to be a core traveler to a true home with us at all stages at all times such a person establishes his own identity his own form inside us and when we put our attention back at the third eye center opening of the tenth door we find him standing there waiting for us and from there we go together on all the journey at all levels of consciousness that's initiation initiation is the establishment of that kind of a friendship with the one who has already achieved who has already gone where we are trying to go who has already got what we are trying to get such a person need not be educated such a person need not be rich or poor such a person need not have any other qualification the only qualification of a perfect living master is he has already achieved what we want to achieve and he can guide us to a true home like he has already guided himself and reached there that's the only qualification and how will we find out we'll struggle through our mind we'll struggle with doubts and fears and we'll struggle but the unconditional love of such a person when we are ready pulls us beyond all these doubts there's nothing else that will take care of our doubts and fears except the unconditional love that comes from such a person and that pulls us beyond our own doubts and our own fears ultimately that's the only solution the unconditional love pulls us of course if you were to ask me can we go and find the perfect living master somewhere my answer would be a sad no because how will we know how will we know a ordinary human being who is just like us 
just like us, living like us, born like us, dying like us, falling sick like us, eating like us. Happen to be a man, sure, sure, sure like us. <laughs> if a person is so ordinary like ourselves, how are we going to find such a person? On the other hand, it will be more difficult to find him when lots of people will be saying, we are the ones who are enlightened. And this guy is not even saying that. Makes it even more difficult. The truth is, that a perfect living master has not come in order to declare who he is. He has not come to say where he is or what he does. He has come to pull us, the marked people who will come in his life and for whom he has been programmed, who have programmed him for themselves. He is coming for them and he is appearing in their life at the right time. And it doesn't matter at all how you care for him, how you address him, how you but treat him so long as he has a job to do, to take you back home, he will do it. The rest is all our mind game. It's our mind game that is playing. So we cannot really go and find one. But we can be found if we are ready. So if you want to meet a perfect living master, my advice is just seek within yourself, not outside. Seek within yourself. Wait for him. He will appear outside. He'll appear by coincidence. He'll appear by accident. He'll appear in mysterious ways, but he will appear in your life when you are ready. Therefore, we don't find such a person. Such a person finds us. And in spite of all the difficulties we have within accepting somebody, a lot of good questions that the mind can have. One of the big questions is, if I am looking for my God, my creator inside, what role has third party to do with it? I don't want an agent to come in the way and take me to God. If God is within me, I should be able to go right in and find. What does the agent have to come and do? The truth is, a perfect living master is not an agent. A perfect living master is a co-traveler with us. He just says, let's travel together. And because he has traveled earlier, he's a good co-traveler and a good guide. That's all. It's not that we are finding an agent. We are not connected to God through an agent. We are connected directly. Our individuated consciousness, which makes us a human being, is not separated from totality of consciousness. It's always connected. It is within the totality of consciousness the whole show is taking place. Therefore, we need no agents. And a perfect living master is no agent. And we don't need an agent. He is only somebody who is able to guide us, first of all, how to find him, in an inner form, in a different form, a form that we will also take if we want to travel in a journey within ourselves. A form that is not physical. A form in which you have all sense perceptions, in which you have the mind, in which there is a soul. All that is intact, only the physical body is not there. That astral form, the sensory form, is the same form he can plant himself in us by saying, I am initiating you. That's all he does. He becomes part of yourself as a co-traveler on the spiritual path within. So, these kind of questions, we don't need anybody. Of course, you don't need anybody. But it's quite nice to, uh, to walk with a guide who's already known the destination. It's always nice to go there. But secondly, we, our mind is so entangled with things here, we are not even th looking up looking toward a true home. We are looking outside all the time. At least a friend who has been to our destination, to our common true home, can tell us these things, makes all the difference. So that is why I say, seek. Seek within yourself and you will find. Seek within yourself. A perfect living Mr. Master will come into your life. I have watched all my life how these things have happened. Whoever has sought, within my knowledge, without going about any, running about anywhere, has been able to find. The perfect living master has come to our doorstep, has come to us by coincidence, has come to us by strange means, and has always been able to help us from there onwards through his unconditional love. All other things he is doing because our mind needs them. Did you know that even meditation, is not a requirement of consciousness, not a requirement of the soul at all. 
It's a requirement of the mind. The mind has been trained that you can get nothing without effort. You can get nothing without struggle. Therefore, these perfect living masters come and say, work hard, meditate more, spend more time. The mind loves it. Now we're going to get something. It's all to appease the mind that we meditate. It is to appease and satisfy the mind. We have to satisfy the mind in order to move forward. Otherwise, it becomes a block. But one good part of this spiritual path is that when you are able to reach at the threshold of the journey within, at the third eye center, it becomes so pleasurable and becomes so beautiful, so attractive, that the attraction of that pathway inside itself makes you leave and get detached from the things outside. A journey becomes very easy. And if it is in the company of a beloved, then nothing like it. You can imagine you go to a holiday. Let's go to a paradise holiday in Hawaii. They call that a paradise island. And you are on a beach there, sitting all alone there. I wish there was somebody with me here. I wish I had somebody to enjoy this together. And then you have a friend with you. You enjoy. The beach looks different. The sunset looks different. The whole beauty changes. A co-traveler makes so much difference. And that's exactly what happens here. When you struggle to find something inside, you are alone. But when you travel with a perfect living master, you have a co-traveler with you, a companion, a friend forever. It's not a short-term friendship. It's a friendship forever. It makes the whole journey so different. So once again, I would like to congratulate, congratulate all of you assembled here and those who can hear me outside of this audience that this is a great time for us to enjoy a vacation within our own self. And be congratulated for so many of you have been able to seek and find a perfect living master. I congratulate you and wish you all a great holiday. So please enjoy yourself. We'll have a break. This uh, event has been organized by ISHA, the Institute for the Study of Human Awareness, a non-profit organization. And uh, Jonathan is the president of that organization, so he's going to make some announcements.